guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Now this week I thought I'd talk about semantics. Shoaling versus schooling. What does it mean and why does it matter? And the reality is it really is semantics, but I think it's important because it helps us to understand our fish better, most specifically how they're going to react in the environment that we're providing for them. So let's first talk about what they are, what the difference is, and what makes a fish do it. Now I get asked all the time, will this fish school with that fish? And the answer is always no, and that's for a simple reason. Shoaling fish are fish that hang out in a group um, for several purposes, you know, to protect against predation, to increase their ability to spawn, and to find food more efficiently in the wild. Schooling fish are different because they're almost always the same kind of fish and they're very directional. So schooling is technically sort of a specialized shoaling. Shoaling can have, you know, various species of fish, most often ones that are of similar shape and size and species, but not always. So this is important because when we set up our glass boxes, our contrived slice of nature, we need to be able to choose fish and sort of predict how well they're going to interact with the environment. And, you know, especially if you're someone who does carefully aquascaped aquariums, understanding fish behavior can help you get a fish that is going to react in the way that you like in your aquarium. Generally speaking, fish only school with their own kind. And what's kind of interesting is the vast majority of fish that are technical schoolers, the ones that are very directional, have what are called passive markers. And that might be a stripe or a particular colored dorsal pattern or spots. And they, they use those as almost markers to line up in their school. And I'll show you some examples of that here in a moment. And fish that shoal are usually what we see in our aquarium. And that's because we're not stocking accurate amounts of fish and this is why you'll often hear me say in a lot of my species spotlights the more the better and that's because the more you have of a fish that's capable of schooling the more likely it is for them to behave that way and it really in our aquariums rarely has anything to do with the implied predator and everything to do with stocking them in appropriate numbers for instance, I keep almost all species tanks here and my schooling fish school because they're in large numbers. Now there's just some species that don't school and this is where the shoaling comes in. And that doesn't mean that they don't group together, it doesn't mean that they don't interact in a lively fashion, it just means that their behavior is less predictable in the environment. So if your goal is to have an aquarium where the fish move in a fashion like this in a very particular part you want to choose carefully what i think is cool too is fish have something that's called quorum sensing and that and it's basically collective decision making and the more fish you have the more predictable it is so with your schoolers it means that the larger the group the more likely they are to stick tight and turn in a predictable fashion without having stragglers the other thing that's interesting is that fish will often isolate out fish that are unhealthy from their school. So if you see, if you have an aquarium full of fish and you see one or two that are not in the school of the same type of fish or the shoal of the same type of fish, it's likely they have a problem. Anyway, let's take a look and I'll tell you more about it and uh, we'll see some examples of what I'm talking about. This quarantine aquarium has two groups of fish. One is a rasbora, the harlequins, and one is an ember tetra. Both are excellent examples of schooling fish. You can see how the embers really go directionally and group together. You can also see that the harlequins are doing the same thing. And while they're in the same general column of the tank, they're both in that middle section, they're not schooling together despite both being orange fish. Now the embers are sort of unusual because they don't have those passive markers, however the harlequins do. And you can see how they sort of line up together. Ferraris are an excellent example of a shoaler. Again, they all sort of stick together, but they're definitely not going in the same direction at all. 
That means in your carefully aquascaped aquarium, they're not gonna have the most predictable of behavior. It doesn't matter what else is in the tank with them. Now, I find them to be interesting because they are always actively engaged with each other, but again, definitely not directional. So if your goal was to have a fish traveling in that middle open water section of your tank, you may not want these guys. They'll definitely utilize it, but they're not gonna give that punch that a schooling fish will. Pencil fish in general are an excellent example of fish that have those passive markers. Their striping will all line up when they're moving in a school. And now these guys are kind of relaxed right now because it's dark in the fish room. But you'll, as you watch them in your aquarium, they generally move together in a pretty decent group. Another example of an excellent schooler is these Labuca Dotti Bergeri, the Dottio or the Indian hatchet. They are extremely directional and they have those passive markers all down their side. They're really fun fish in a carefully scaped aquarium because their behavior is so predictable. They're really wonderful and you can see how active and directional they are. You can also see an example of uh, sort of that gang mentality of the quorum sensing in this aquarium. You can see in the Kerbensis tank how even though all these fish are about the same size, they're really prone to sticking with their own type. The few neons that are left, those ancient fish are sticking together. The crystal barbs are sticking together. And the cherry barbs are loosely grouping together. So you can see that, you know, this is why it's better to have large groups of a single type of fish than several small groups of fish, depending on what your goals are. I mean, these fish are all certainly happy and healthy, but the visual impact would be much greater if I had more of each. I hope showing you some examples helped. I mean, the reality is this is an issue of semantics, but understanding our fish's natural behaviors and how to best showcase them will really get you a much better result in our aquarium. If it's schooling or shoaling, it doesn't really matter. The principles remain the same. Always get as many of a species as you can fit safely and comfortably in your tank. You'll get a much more natural behavior. You'll get a much more natural behavior and predictable behavior from your fish by stocking more fish of the same species than you do when you mix several species. And I know it's hard to to limit yourself and censor yourself and not try and have every shiny fish. That's why I highly recommend having lots of tanks so that you can keep all the various fish that you love. Anyway, I hope that helped. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano.